This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Coward and Jason Whitlock. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. Taco Tuesday, everybody. Enjoy the tacos tonight. Hopefully, we'll get a good NBA game. Lots of feuds today on the show. Let's get to it. Cowherd remembers Magic and Bird and can't believe we are complaining about the inevitable Warriors-Cavs Part 3. Whitlock is upset about the KD and Westbrook feud ending because he said we had a boring NBA season and conflict is good. He even drops a Billions reference. That's the best show on TV right now if you're not watching, folks. Plus, me and Broussard revitalize Jordan LeBron. A- another victory for McIntyre. I beat Broussard on his podcast, and then I just clown suited him again today on the show. We discussed the 2008 Celtics reunion and the shots they took at Ray Allen on TV last night. Man, those Celtics are so petty. Finally, should the Patriots go for an undefeated season? Former Super Bowl champ Eric Davis says go for it. Ready for Speak for Yourself? Coward and Whitlock, take it away. Welcome to the show. We'll tell you why the Patriots should go for an undefeated season. And how LeBron James is actually on the verge of surpassing Michael Jordan. It's close, Broussard. Speak for yourself starts right now. Yeah, Colin just spoke for himself. <laughs> Inches, not, not feet or yards. Let's return to the NBA where LeBron James just won his 31st playoff series, passing Michael Jordan, uh, in whose shadow he's been standing since he was about 16 years old. LeBron is looking for his fourth title. Still a couple behind MJ, but in Jordan's six title runs, he never once faced an opponent as daunting as this year's Warriors with Kevin Durant. Whitlock, could LeBron actually surpass Jordan by beating this year's Warriors? I'm not going to go surpass. I think he would legitimize completely the argument and discussion. And if somebody wanted to take LeBron's side, I wouldn't call him crazy. I wouldn't call him disrespectful to Michael Jordan. For me... I'm not ready to go there, even if he does beat these Warriors. I'm willing to entertain the conversation, but for right now, and and even after, if if he wins another title, I'm still on Team Jordan. Everybody needs a trampoline, no matter how big they are. Um, You know, Bill O'Reilly obviously had some uh, bad situation recently for his career, but for 20 years, he banged around news. Mainstream media. And then Roger Ailes was his trampoline. Rachel Maddow was smart before MSNBC. That movement, trampoline. People never, they forget this about Michael Jordan. Michael was great, but Nike gave him the trampoline, the Mars Blackman commercials. He went from great basketball player to all-time icon. Like, bulletproof, infidelity, pettiness, punch the teammate. Those arrows can't get through the force field of popularity. Everybody needs a trampoline. KD to the Warriors is LeBron's trampoline. If he beats them, you're going to go, no, no. Oh, wait, he beat two of the greatest players in league history. The, he, KD is the trampoline for LeBron. Everybody needs one. All well, of our careers. Jordan. I, I, I've said LeBron has <clears throat> to win this year and next year over this same Warriors team, assuming they get so there to beat be, the same team <laughs> twice. <laughs> yes. Beat him Look, three times in a row. Jordan was six like, for six in the finals, times. never had any weaknesses. And yes, he did not dominate a big three era. He, But what he dominated was the era of the greatest big men we've ever seen in this league. Shaq, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, Alonzo Mourning. Jordan had to go through all of them and dominate it. LeBron hasn't had to dominate big men like that. Roy Hibbert. Uh-oh. Roy Hibbert yeah, gave geez. Miami fits but Michael a Jordan, few years ago Jordan in the playoffs. didn't have to face the three-ball yeah, revolution. The, what about the super teams? That's the big knock yeah. on Jordan. I, he, there were good teams, okay? Listen, the Toronto Raptors won as many games as the Knicks did during their time. The Hawks won 60 games two years ago. And they are not even super teams. They're talking about the Celtics. They're terrible the, teams the, is what they are. Don't forget the don't San Antonio Spurs. Don't compare to the teams Jordan played. The San Antonio Spurs were a dynasty for nearly 15 years, and of course the Super Warriors, okay? I'm totally 100% with Are, Coward. Just He's this year. passing them. Oh, come on, if he beats this team. Let, let's, we tend to over-dramatize everything. You know, you look at that pacer Nick series, where they were shooting 70 free throws a night, and we're like, Greatest series ever. Unwatchable. Drac. Free throw What's contest. What's that got to do with Jordan? <laughs> exactly. Don't point it down you, guys, you guys no are always like Johnson. Jordan-faced legendary teams. 
John Starks was gro bagging groceries. Why, you keep why aren't you talking about Isaiah Thomas, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson? Those guys Johnson. were going he in the 90s. He couldn't beat those teams multiple times. Jordan got to the finals after teams got older, like Boston. Yeah, I, he Larry Bird's through. back was broken. Isaiah retired at 32. You guys, I, I'll Johnson give you that, that he, LeBron will have beaten better teams. Way better I mean, teams. Oklahoma City As team he beat is going to have three. Whoa, 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 whoa. If Jordan had the opportunity to go join up with two of the ten best players in the league, he would have that on his resume, too. That, look, that's a little bit of an argument. I mean, you're nitpicking when you talk about greatness. Jordan, we also never saw him have the struggles that LeBron had against Dallas. He was favored every year in the finals. Yes. Who, Jordan? Jordan, yeah. So LeBron has been favored uh, no. every, every year except 07. He was favored against the Warriors Not last the Warriors, year? but the, last the two four years? years he was with Miami, Miami. he was okay. favored. But he was. Here's the thing. The Dallas, the Dallas series is a big knock against LeBron in the argument with okay. Jordan. I think he can overcome it, but you can't just overcome it with this one finals. You got to win next okay. year. What about now you got a three-point like, three like Jordan. How many times did LeBron Hattery? get bounced in the first round of the playoffs? Zero. He How about didn't Michael make Jordan? it the first Three. two years. Yeah, he was an 18-year-old fresh out of high school. <laughs> he still didn't on, make the playoffs. Uh, 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 LeBron bounced uh, yeah. zero LeBron times. LeBron is the right round. there, but he's oh. got, I think he's got to win the next two. To another championship team, the 2008 Boston Celtics, who were reunited by Kevin Garnett on his Area 21 segment for TNT this week, but conspicuously absent from the reunion, was Ray Allen, who has been estranged from his teammates since breaking up Boston's big three by leaving for rival Miami in 2012. Here's KG on why Allen wasn't invited. So everybody's asking us, where's Ray? You know, uh, people don't understand that this is real life for us. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, the situation with Ray is very sensitive, um, uh -huh. you know? And I think that when we all talked about doing this reunion tour, we was talking about, you know, guys that we consider loyal and part of this group. <clears throat> Just being honest, my two cent, man, when Ray decided to go to the Heat, I feel like he moved on. And he went to pursue another ring, and he got another ring, shout to him, and that's it. You know, it wasn't no other Wizards, it wasn't no other Spurs, it wasn't no other Heat, it wasn't nobody, it was all Celtics invited to this. Allen, for his part, posted a picture of himself facing off with Rajon Rondo on Facebook with the cryptic statement, the power to push limits. Colin, whose side are you on here, Ray Allen or the rest of the Celtics? Ray Allen. <clears throat> Those Celtics, this is ridiculous. Why? So let me ask you, did, did uh, KG, did he end his career in Boston? Did, did, did Glenn Davis, did Paul Pierce? Oh, they left eventually, <laughs> too, for Pierce money. Not <laughs> three other teams. <laughs> it was a ring the... chasing. With oh, their God rival, ring chasing. With their rival, <laughs> with oh, their rival. There was a rivalry with the Heat. Oh, please. It's pro sports. This isn't Michigan, Ohio State. <laughs> God, you this I wish rivalry. It was. By the way, you left. You, rival, rival, rival. You're back in. So yeah, what? You do what's best for Jason Whitlock, and I totally support it. I can't play here's for the, my here's rival. The thing, Jason. Ray Allen, his last year with the Celtics. He wasn't even starting in the playoffs. He only started ten of the was eighteen he games. In Miami? No, but he went to he went to a better situation where yeah. he could win a for championship. Less money. Yeah, he won. He was a he's an NBA Finals hero. He saved LeBron and, and the Heat that one year. He could have stuck with Boston and tried and, to... and come off the bench. They were done. It was five years after they won the title. How about this? They were done. You saw the picture of him and Rondo. How many coaches did Rondo fight with? <laughs> Doc Rivers, Tubby Smith at Kentucky, Rick Carlisle in Dallas. Yeah, Rondo's a. a a jerk, to put it nicely, okay? Ray Allen wants to get out, go to Miami, hang out with LeBron. He ran away Pat because Riley. of Ray John Rondo. Well, well, I mean, oh. listen, if that's your point guard who's First passing all, you the ball. First of all, when you're in pro you know, Rondo sports. was a great point guard for Great Boston. point guard, listen, but he's also a jerk. Here's two areas I don't want to hear about morality. Wall Street and the NBA. You just go and get your money in rings I, for no, both. No, it's about team oh, key. and camaraderie <laughs> and a fellowship with your teammates. I'm oh, still, I still, I, I text with my former teammates Constantly. They, and look, I have, I have nothing Constantly. but love and respect for those Celtics, but they were not a dynasty. They were talking like they were a dynasty. They won one ring together. Like yes. I said, Ray left four or five years after that. They were done by then. He they got beaten the first round. He didn't the contact any of them and tell them he was going. He left in a disrespectful manner. If 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 they felt betrayed by that and five, six, seven years later, were like, Man, we good. We don't need Ray. I'm fine with you don't that. Think, That's should real. Should they get over this? How long That's, should this? 
<laughs> Forever. Shaq as as and Kobe concerned. have reunited. Dan Gilbert and LeBron Kevin have reunited. Now and Durant Russell wasn't. They can't get reunited. over this. Come on. Kanye and they Taylor Swift there. recently <laughs> reunited. The only thing I thought was disrespectful is they had Willie Rofe in there with them, too. Or was, or was, that, or was that Big Baby? Or who was that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they inviting a Hall of Fame <laughs> offensive linemen. Let's start in Salt Lake City where the Warriors blew out the Jazz last night to complete their second straight sweep of the playoffs, but the Warriors aren't the only ones dominating. The Cavs have also swept through the first two rounds. Last night, Draymond Green was asked about the seeming inevitability of a Cavs-Warriors rematch. Draymond, uh, this morning you were talking about that you thought the Cleveland series was kind of boring, and I guess tonight on TNT, the guys were complaining that um, your series was boring too, and that basketball playoffs are boring, and these two <laughs> dominant teams on a collision course. Uh, what do you think about that? Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? <laughs> You're not allowed to have an opinion, Draymond. You're just supposed to play basketball, all right? True. Sorry. All right, nobody's had a chance against these two teams <laughs> so far. Winning by huge margins and shooting lights out from three, it's also the first time two teams have started the postseason 8-0. Colin, are the Warriors and the Cavs ruining the playoffs? Ruining. You know who's ruining it? Milwaukee, Utah. <laughs> We've been begging for a rivalry for, since Magic and the Lakers. We want rivalries. This is what we want. I wanted to see Utah and Jordan meet each other again because they gave him so much trouble. Sports is about rivalries. We have one. Why are we complaining about no, no, no. it? Have you checked the calendar? Yeah. It's early May. You're yeah. talking about the rivalry in June. Right. Right now, we're all bored stiff, and these super teams ruined the regular season, made it irrelevant, all right. and now they're ruining the early rounds of the playoffs. When's the last time you were at, you don't go to bars, but you were at a sports book, and you sat with a guy at a sports pick and said, remember 30 years ago, the year that anybody could have won it? <laughs> You've never had that conversation. One, this is I history. I still remember Dikembe Mukumbo <laughs> laying on the ground, shaking the this, ball. Folks, this is what we'll talk about in 30 years. Why are we complaining about it? I don't know why we're complaining either, because you mentioned, you mentioned Magic teams. In the 80s, they own the West. I mean, what, maybe once or twice nine they didn't go to the first. Nine the times they went to the first. Well, we talk year. about that as being the golden era yeah. of basketball and how they saved it. Right now, you're looking at teams, and then we, Magic, I, I mean, uh, Michael Jordan, we talk about Mac, Michael Jordan and what he did. He could have won eight in a row if not being sent to minor league baseball yeah. for gambling. And we all know that's why he went there. It had nothing to do with him wanting to retire. But he had but battles with Reggie oh, Bull. Wait, oh, but wait, you oh, overstated. Like overstated. Those why are overstated. Why can't we just say the reason that these two, teams, these two teams are sweeping people right now because with today's rules, they're just better? Way better. They could better. be all-time Way teams. better. I think what's ruining these, if I don't even want to use a ruin, ruin word, but what's making these playoffs tough are the blowouts. 15 of the 16 games in the second round have yeah. been blowouts. That's the problem. I'm interested in San Antonio Houston. Even though I know neither one of them is going to the finals, yeah. I'm interested, but I want some close games. It's a close series, but I want some close games. Memphis San Antonio was a great series, even though I know neither one of them is reaching the finals. So I actually think it's great because, again, you've got close series for the diehards, and then you've got these two juggernauts on their way to a collision course in the finals. This is going to be Mayweather Pacquiao in oh, their, hold on, in, their primes, in their primes. Oh, in their primes. By, by in their primes. The, the NFL is king because it extends its brand. The season ends, then we talk combine, draft, free agency. It extends the brand. Baseball doesn't, hockey doesn't, soccer doesn't. Basketball is the other sport beyond the NBA that it extends its brand. If the Warriors, if LeBron beats the Warriors, we're going to talk about that for eight weeks until Dallas opens the season. If the Warriors beat the Cavs, we're going to complain they're too good, and it's fundamentally hurt the league for eight weeks. Why do you keep moving to June? It's May 9th, according to my bottom calendar. Bottom line. And you're bored. He's bored. You're bored. No, you are bored. This is the thing. This is not new. Remember Shaq and Kobe's three-peat? Yes. They beat Indian. Sorry. Indiana, One which team. was decent. New Jersey and Philadelphia this in the final. They rounded both those weak teams. Both but the conference. East was but terrible by the way. That point. The Big New Jersey Ten was winning the okay, East. Okay, want to make a bet that Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten? Are you bored with it? 
We like dominance. That's why I go to Starbucks. When I drive into Starbucks at 6 in the morning and I need my coffee buzz, I know you don't like any drugs, but I like my <laughs> caffeine. When I'm pulling into Starbucks, I know that Starbucks is hurting mom and pop coffee places. But damn it, I'm, I need my buzz, and they're on the corner, and on that corner, and on that corner. I'm comfortable with dominance. What, what's right? I'm comfortable you know, with dominance, but we got it going on on both sides of the deal. Because maybe they're just that much yeah, better than yeah, all the time. And be glad that you have those, because you know, we would, to Colin's point, we would be talking about if the Warriors or the Cavs didn't make it. If yep. one of those teams didn't make it, we'd all be upset to not see that series. But you Jason, want to see that people series. will look back at this series and this rivalry like Magic and Bird. There is no question hey, about it. Listen, That's I'm how they're going to look that. back at Come it. Come June. <laughs> but right now, the conversation about what's going on in May. Wall and... versus Isaiah Thomas doesn't excite you? It does. I do like that series. I, and again, I like the San Antonio Houston series. But to see. Golden State cheat its way to be in a super duper team. Cheat. Yeah, cheat. with Kevin Durant. Oh, oh, and rude. to see LeBron James jump from team to team to team chasing time. Oh, you sound like a bitter pacer. It's <laughs> well, the Cavs Warriors rivalry is heating up. Another rivalry between Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant appears to be cooling down. According to Kendrick Perkins, the feud between the former teammates. Ah, it's already over after just one season. <laughs> Hug life. I think the night that Russ actually broke the record, uh, I had text KD the next day. Uh, he was talking about something, and uh, he sent me a text and was like, hey, man, me and Russ had a nice conversation That's yesterday. Dope, what the media don't even know nothing That's about, good. but I just let it be known That's that, good. you know, they That's back good. on talking terms, you That's know good. what I mean? So, mm -hmm. That's good. It, you know, the differences aside... All right, Whitlock, Durant Westbrook, best of friends, bothered? Yeah, I am a little bothered. <laughs> Seriously, it was, again, in a boring NBA regular season, the drama between Westbrook and Durant was kind of interesting. And it kind of reminded me of the old school where the Pistons clearly didn't like the Celtics. Uh, the Pistons clearly didn't like Michael Jordan. The Celtics clearly didn't like Michael Jordan. I like that. Why is everybody got to be BFF? In professional basketball, one of now. your favorite shows is Billions. Yeah, where the where the hedge fund guy and the attorney general are at odds. Yes, drama. It, yeah, no, like one of my favorite teams of all time. Remember the Miami Hurricanes in the nineties? Yeah, and Notre Dame. Dame. You. Okay, like nobody liked Miami. Florida State hated them. Florida hated them. The NCAA changed rules: crotch grabbing and thrusting. They were literally at odds with the commit the people that ran the sport. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we got Alabama. Nothing against Alabama. I like dynasties, but hey, yo, yo, it's the same team every year. We all have to get comfortable with discomfort. Conflict is why they make movies. Like, Westbrook and KD gave us, like, 12 shows. But it was great. How long was that going to last? Okay, it was great this season. But next year, when we really, oh, they don't like each other. The only thing that was going to make that series exciting now was Oklahoma City getting better and maybe actually being able to compete with Golden State. And I think we overstate back in the day. Magic and Isaiah were kissing before the finals. Remember yes, that? They were. In the 93 finals, Jordan and Barkley and the Suns players were hanging out after games <laughs> at Jordan's restaurant in Chicago. Like, we overstate all this hate that they have for each other. And I sat right here in this chair next to you, and I remember it vividly because you were dressed not quite as nice <laughs> as you are today. Didn't have, I don't think you had the hat on that day. And I told you that I agreed with Durant when he said that this was a media fabrication. And I said, this is a conversation. These guys, was there some animosity? Was, was, were they upset? Yes. Was this some type of feud? No, this was a simple conversation. Westbrook feelings were hurt. He called the dude, and I, I was like, this is a conversation, one simple conversation, and I believe that's what this took. It was never a few. This was never going to fuel the NBA. This was never going to be some type of bitter rivalry. You saw how he had expressed... It was something. He expressed his feelings <laughs> about this guy before, when uh, Durant did, when he was giving his MV, MVP speech, and it was something right. I'm telling Westbrook's feelings were hurt, and he wanted the conversation. They had it, and it... It was squash. This was inevitably going to end because in order to have a great rivalry, there's got to be, like, LeBron beating yeah. Golden State makes this rivalry great. In the end, Golden State now is built for the next four years to not only beat Oklahoma City, but pummel them. 
Oklahoma City doesn't have the cap room to get three-point shooters. So this would have died eventually a natural organic death because it's not competitive. Like, like Miami, Cleveland. When LeBron first went back, oh, it was vitriol everywhere. Yeah, but the next awesome. season, do you remember how the awesome first, that was? The first year, it was awesome. Was it awesome the second year? <laughs> yeah. They were beating them not by forty awesome. every time. <laughs> not at dude, you remember the first time. The first time I was, was in the great. arena. I'm I sure know. you were the too. The first time was it was crazy. Great. It was that's what sports that is. The la- it didn't last, and it wouldn't have lasted. It went west. No, not a ri- a rivalries are born when I beat you or you beat me when it matters. Cowboys, not when it ma- Yes, because we were beating each other when it mattered. I other guarantee, than that, it's I not a rivalry. KD made the phone call. I guarantee you Westbrook was down. Look, they ain't got to be friends. And Westbrook's going to stay the course in Oklahoma City. That was the other thing Kendrick Perkins said. Look, your radio show was at its best when you and Jim Harbaugh didn't like each other. Right. Now the guy's sneaking into your dressing room, <laughs> writing little love letters. You sit up here and cape up for him. This, the rival, your radio show needed you and Harbaugh at each other's throat. Eventually, you have to grow. And I grew with Harbaugh. Listen, we'll come up with another rivalry. I think what's going to happen is whoever wins the finals, something's going to be spawned from that. Like, there's going to be stuff that comes out during that. First of all, is Steph Curry going to play poorly again? We're going we're gonna to question the value of Steph Curry when it matters. Let's just let this thing bake a little bit. We'll have another rivalry. For the record, Gordon Hayward may leave. Durant, if he loses or wins, could leave eventually. So these personal conflicts will happen. Colin ain't got the heart for it, but trust me, I'm going to go at Lebatar and Stu Gatz. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to the Super Bowl champion, Patriots. Why not? According to oddsmakers, the Patriots are projected to have more than 12 wins this year. That's the highest regular season win total projection in a decade. All right, Whitlock, it's been 10 years since Brady and Belichick came up just short of an undefeated season. Is it time for them now to go history and take another shot at perfection? I think without question. They're playing with house money now. They have their fifth Super Bowl title. Uh, they, Tom Brady has his case for why he's the greatest quarterback of all time. If you really want to put an exclamation point on the Brady Belichick legacy, you go after the Miami Dolphins undefeated season and stamp yourself as clearly the greatest team of all time and the greatest dynasty of all time. And it's really an easy bar to hop over if, again, if you get the undefeated season. There's no question they're better than those Dolphins. Dolphins team that went undefeated, their opponents, a combined 70, 122, and four. Didn't beat up on the greatest collection of talent. It's funny, though. I, to me, football's always been a sport of attrition. Um, the two things I've always thought about football is football players are smarter than they're given credit for because most went to college. Agreed. Three, yeah. Thank you very much. Most went to college for three or four years. To America. Thank uh, you. Football players are smart. You got to learn a playbook. It's a very fluid sport. Um, and the second thing about football, it's it's really about attrition. If you're healthy at the end of the year, you have a big advantage. So I've seen, you're saying don't do it. I'm saying just get healthy. I would rest people. I mean, we've seen the Cavaliers flip a switch. Here's what I care about. Is Gronk available? Is Edelman available in week 19? That's all I care about. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, when, when we look at teams that go undefeated, that chase history, we've seen... In other sports, NBA, the latest with the Warriors, they chasing it and then ran out of gas. They didn't have what it took to win in the final games, the games that counted. So, And we've seen this New England team who's chased it before. They chased it before with Randy Moss. Bad luck. And look, I I don't care what you call it. Incredible catch. The the Giants (laughs) play. They outperformed them in that game. They won it. But they've done it before, and the outcome, the result wasn't what they wanted. Also, so, with social, you know, Facebook and stuff these days, there's a heightened pressure. Like, Michael Jordan didn't live basket to basket. I mean, it's like Michael never missed a shot. Like, LeBron lives, <laughs> like, basket to basket. You get to 17-0, 18-0, I think the pressure, the, just kind of the world of lucky sports. lucky catch got him. Hey, you know, I'm with you, Wit, on this one. Why not go for it? Because you go into, Greg, you know, you go into every season trying to win a, every game anyway. Right. Now, this is the team, and I was a part of a team that was trying to three-peat. You play, this team has already played a lot of games. They, they go deep into the playoffs every year, so your, your season is longer, your offseason is shorter. That's a part of winning. That's a, that's a part of it. 
the, the Patriots are in position now to do, and, and like I said, I was part of an organization that understands it. We, they won their five Super Bowls in like 16 years. The, the Niners did in 14. So you were constantly trying to win every single game. Why not say that you are the best ever? Why not try to go out and have the opportunity to squash all of it? You, you went through the regular season undefeated, something that I didn't think was going to happen. It's harder, I think it's harder to lose every game but, than but, to win every game. They've already done it. Continue to try to win them all. Yeah, but we've never, when we sit around talking best teams ever, I've never once thought the Dolphins were the best team. I think the Steelers in the mid-70s were better by far. Like, like, when, since when does undefeated in football mean best? Well, only one team pops champagne every year, the 72 Dolphins. And we can talk about... The Niners in the, the 80s with, were way better than the Dolphins. Don't we all know that? Yes, but this, yeah. is, but this is the thing right now. With the new rules, the way things have changed, we talk about it in every sport. In baseball, we talk about it in basketball. Who could have done what with what era? If you put this... If the Patriots put the stamp on it, with the, which means you get another Super Bowl win... Okay, you get another Super Bowl win, an undefeated season, you have Tom Brady doing what he's done, I think it goes beyond just the comparisons of other teams. I think when you get that undefeated season in football, you now have the claim of the best See, and, and For me, that's what makes this team so special, the fact that we're even talking about what they should do because we know that they, if they, they really if they really put their minds to do it, if, if Belichick came out at the start of the season saying, Look, I told my guys we're 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 trying to run the table. Well, he we would us. We would all exactly. <laughs> but we, if he came out and said it publicly, we would all be like, it's such a more intriguing season already out the gate because this is a team that can really possibly do it. And now now that they've said it, this is not really the Patriot way. They've done it. They've it hasn't worked. I think for them, Mark stamping their le legacy is. Adding Super Bowl championship and that's what rings. That's I'm saying. What I do in an undefeated manner. My thing, though, is if you want to be bigger than just football and be the greatest team ever, yeah, but particularly with the schedule they're facing this year, they play the AFC West and they play Pittsburgh and Atlanta. It would be no cakewalk. They would establish themselves as the greatest team in the history of team sports. Yeah, but I don't... I, is Dan Fouch or Trent Dilfer better? Because only one's got a ring. Like, when we've never used the Super Bowl... Dan Fouch. Of course. <laughs> he didn't win the Super Bowl. I'm not talking about Super Bowl, though. I'm talking about taking on an incredible schedule in a sport like football and running the table and winning the Super Bowl. You're the greatest team ever assembled. This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Coward and Jason Whitlock. I am your host, Jason McIntyre. Hey, make sure to see us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and YouTube. We never really know how you find the podcast. It's all over the place. And we're all over social media. Speaking of social media, I released another edition of Hot Take Happy Hour today. Oh, boy, the hate was flowing like magma on Facebook and Twitter, folks. I'm telling you, there is a strong case to be made that Steph Curry is already the second-best point guard in NBA history behind Magic Johnson. It's not a slight to Isaiah Thomas, who would be my number three, to say Curry, who has been transformative in the NBA. He has completely changed the landscape of the league, two MVP awards, two finals trips. He's rewritten the three-point record book. I'm telling you, folks, Steph Curry, second-best point guard in NBA history. Talk to you tomorrow.